Welcome to the second episode of the React Code Review, the ongoing series where I review your React code. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at three projects, an online forum, a Pokédex, and a journaling app. If you're interested in getting your code reviewed, then you can request a code review. I'm going to put a link down in the description. The first project is a community engagement forum that encourages people to meet up, create events, and just have fun together. Uh, this is the homepage, and when clicking on a category, you can see all the entries in it. Here you see it's actually very similar to something like Reddit. Now this uses Meteor.js in the backend. This is used for basically the database and the API. It also uses SAS for styling and Bootstrap for the UI components. Now the first thing that I noticed when checking out the project is how good the readme is. It includes information about the project, also how to contribute, which packages are using, how to set up your development environment and it's just ideal for new contributors by the way new contributors are welcome in the project as the maintainer let me know now let's take a look at the code generally speaking this code review is going to be really concentrated on one topic and that is using the latest javascript and react features for example here we have a class events and this is the class that renders a list of the cards now this component is defined as a class which is the old way of doing things in react as you can see here this is actually 22 lines now if you were to use a function component it will make the code simpler and also easier to understand so let's try to do that so this is not going to be a class anymore, it's going to be a function. And instead of having a render component, you can just return. Of course, here we're missing the props. Now we can also do this deconstructing in the props. We don't need this line here. Uh, as you can see, we have here these events and we don't need to define them separately. So we can just move them here. And here we have an inline arrow function that doesn't need to have the curly braces and be something like this. Now, as you can see, this got really way shorter and we can do the same thing here, make this even shorter by using an arrow function. And my rule of thumb is to always use arrow functions when you're not using any hook inside the function. So here we don't need this return statement anymore. And actually now that I'm looking at it, we also don't need this react fragment. As you can see, this whole function is right now just takes a few lines, I don't know, five or six lines. Now moving to another component, I see here cancel delete buttons. And here we can also use the same tactic, basically use function components. And here we can also use deconstructing for having basically less code for the same thing. Another thing that I've noticed is that there is a lot of use of the window object. This is basically a global uh, variable and it's used for two ways. One is for having this function set document title that is used in multiple components. And the other one is this map type. This is a global constant that is used throughout the application. Now for here, I would uh, really recommend just using React's built-in context API. And the context API is actually very good for having global uh, variables. Now for the set uh, document title, my approach would be to use a React hook, like use document title that has a use effect inside of it that updates the document title each time that the input changes. Now jumping to another component, this is the category dropdown. I'm noticing inside the render function that there is an array that is created for the display elements. And this is a typical case for array that map. Instead of using for each, we can just map the elements. I'm seeing there's also this one option that is disabled. This is basically the title, sort by category. And we can have this here as well. Here we can also just have distant props inside the function. Now, one of the disadvantages of using JavaScript, especially with class components in React, is that it's hard to figure out how the props look like. So if you were to use function components and deconstruct the props in the function, then it will be easier to know at least what you're expecting. Now in category dropdown, 
uh, you're using component tit update, which is a function that is called, I believe, every time that the props change. And each time that the props change, you call the callback function change category. This is because you have a state inside this component. And I believe that's not the best approach to do this because this is a typical input component. For input components, it's easier to just have fully controlled component. That means that you don't have any state inside of it, but you just have two props, value and on value change. There's a great example of that in the React documentation. I'm gonna put the link of that in the description as well. Here you have, for example, on input, you have value and on change. So basically follow the same pattern with custom-made inputs as well. And one last thing that I noticed, or to be honest, my editor war warned me about is the use of these deprecated functions, uh, string that's substring. I think you should just use the new substring function. Uh, otherwise, maybe the support will drop sometime for the old function and your web page can just break at any time. Thanks for your submission and thanks for taking the time to give back to the community. The second project is a Pokédex and here you can watch Pokemon showdown battles in real time. You can also get information about the Pokemons and there is also a quiz where you uh, check out how good you are at playing Pokemon. Now I don't really play Pokemon, but I know a thing or two about React. So let's take a look at the code. First of all, the project is really well structured. It's very easy to find anything that you're looking for. And I think the code quality is also very high. It uses TypeScript, which makes me happy and also uses like default parameters. So it's really cool. Now heads up, this code review is gonna be a bit of nitpicking because the code quality is actually pretty good. For example, in this component, ability is displayed. You don't have to check if the array is undefined or not. You can just map it. If it's possible for, for it to be undefined, then it should be, of course, defined in the interface and have a question mark here. This can also be simplified by removing these curly braces and this return statement. Now, the same remark applies here to get moves. It can be simplified. If here we're expecting it to be undefined, then we can use a question mark. And if it's undefined, then we can have an empty array. And here we can just remove the return statement again. And I think like this is very clear what's happening. Now, another thing that I've noticed is the usage of use effect when it's not really needed. And that's actually the case of having a derived state. For example, here we have this effectiveness object and it relies on types array. So every time that this property value changes, we set the value of the state. So this is a typical case of an unneeded use effect. Instead of using use state, we can have a normal variable and we define the value directly and we don't need this use effect at all. So this is exactly the same thing as before. So the thing is, every time a prop changes, the component is going to be re-rendered and the new value is going to be computed. And the same thing happens here in this component stats display. We have a stat, which is a state here, and it relies on this Pokemon name. And this comes from the props. So the same thing applies here. You can get rid of use effect and just define stats as a normal constant and not use use effect. Now, when it comes to the custom hooks, I'm seeing there is a use random uh, battle data. And this hook basically fetches a random item from this uh, GitHub repository. While this may not be obvious at first sight, there is a race condition problem here. And that can happen when you have two API requests happening at the same time. Basically, when this battle type changes too fast. And what can happen is that the first response takes longer than the second one and it ends up overwriting the state. For that reason, I just recommend people to use TanStack query, previously known as React query, to get rid of this kind of tedious problems. Now, one last comment before moving to the next project is regarding this hook, use web socket connection. And here I'm noticing that in the use effect, there are some missing dependencies, which means that this effect is not really reactive. So once that these parameters change, you're not sure that this use effect here is gonna be run again. The last project is called journal and it's a journaling app. Now this is the welcome screen and you can create a new journal. Also choose an icon. And once you have a journal, you can add entries and you also have here generate a writing prompt, which just asks you questions. So I really enjoyed using this. Uh, the UX is really good. And I really like this welcome screen text here that just changes. And I took a look at the code and it's actually using a library for that. It's called react type animation. And with this, you can just 
define the text that you want to have and how long to wait between each pair of texts and it just does the text animation for you so it's really cool now i found that there are a few problems using this application the first one is that the journal somehow don't persist so when I create a new journal I cannot see it although when I take the URL and open it in a new tab it still works so I'm not really sure what the problem is exactly and for me the UI just seems a little bit off because it's using MUI which is this UI library based on Google's material UI style guides so it feels really like if you're on a Google website uh, currently I'm really digging this UI library called Mantine it has a lot of UI elements and it looks Looks very modern. Now taking a look at the front end code that the data is stored on a back end storage and also cached using local storage. And the problem with that is that you have this local storage set item or get item everywhere throughout the app, which means it's very disorganized. It's very easy to misspell a key. And also it's hard to keep track when exactly the items are saved to local storage and if the synchronization really works. So for that, I would really just recommend using React Query. It takes care of caching and also sharing data between multiple components. Now I also noticed that there are some places where the code doesn't really belong for example here we have this list and this list entry takes a function as a parameter and this function basically doesn't need to be here this can just be inside of the entry because it doesn't use anything provided by this parent element i always try to keep state and functions as low as possible inside the react component tree to just avoid useless re-renders and other side effects now inside this component sort entries i'm noticing that there is a react component stored inside a state for that i would recommend to just use use ref which is more appropriate for that i hope my feedback was helpful and not too cynical if you enjoyed this react code review you can check out the previous episode and see you in the next one